Welcome back to the Tim and Steve Show. I am Tim Beard. I'm Steve Morris. How's it going, Steve? Yeah, good. Ready for the weekend. Yeah, I hear you. I'm ready for a vacation. I wasn't for a while, and now I'm very much ready for vacation. I'm just spent. I just, ugh. I mean, I didn't do really much last night because it rained. Man, when we left, well, when I left here, wow, was it raining on the way home. And then uh, got to the land this morning, and the driveway washed out. Not horrible, but pretty good. I was like, yeah. Some washing, and not the garden itself, but like around where the eggplant is, and I could tell it's kind of washed some through there. And then, of course, the weeds have like exploded since the rain. So I got to go up there and like weed before I leave, so that way you can just water it. Well, at this point, you might not have to only just water a few times. Yeah, I don't know what the weather looks like next week. Yeah, I haven't checked the weather. It's supposed to be warm, I believe, but, um, or yeah, everything. It's crazy when it rains and then you go out to the garden because it just, I went up to, I fed the animals this morning, um, and the vegetables all have, like, gotten bigger. Not not as impressive as your squash plants over there growing like they are, but. Yeah, there's no rain predicted, so I'll have to probably water. Yeah, a couple times anyways. Yeah. But, yeah, you probably. Highs in the mid, upper 80s. Nice. Lows in the 50s and 60s. Nice. So it'll be a nice week. Hopefully it's a little warm. I'll be up in Pittsburgh. It's a little, usually it's cooler up there. Um, hopefully I just get good weather, though. That's all that really matters to me. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I had the AC on when I got up there this morning. Thank you. Thank you for that. I had to take the garbage out, so I was up moving. Like normally, I water, right, and that's about as far as I go. It's like halfway down the yard, but I had to get busy this morning, make sure I didn't miss the garbage pickup. Right, and they come every two weeks. Yeah, man, you guys don't go through much trash at all. Our house, the dumpster gets dumped every week, and it's full. Our- well, we recycle, so we have the two cans. So it kind of. Yeah, I think even if we did, like, a lot of times we'll put our cardboard out in the burn pit and just burn the cardboard. But, yeah, I don't know. I mean, a lot more people. You got a lot more people yeah. coming in and out of your house. You got family yeah. and kids with friends. It's a zoo. I live in a real-life zoo, but there's no cute little furry creatures running around. <laughs> there's just Adelina. But <laughs> My house is very quiet and professional. There, You know, we greet each other, and then we sit down, fold our hands properly, and not communicate. I'm just kidding. That is the biggest line of BS. I'm sure it's quiet, though. You're not joking about that. Yeah. Of course, you have a puppy terrorizing now. It's probably a little bit, but how's he doing? Yeah, he's doing all right. He, a few accidents, but uh, he goes oh, to the door and barks. That's good. He, you know, Nikki doesn't, I don't know. He's horrible with her. He'll go up and bite at her, you know, like to play, like not meanfully or anything, but doesn't do that with me and Zeta. I think it's all the, however Nikki presents herself to the dog. Like it's playtime and you're like disciplined and yeah. don't go on the floor, don't do this. Well, you know, I'm the one that teaches JJ all the cool tricks that he can do. And then Nikki gets involved and unlearns him basically. Like messes up. She'll give him treats before he fully completes the tasks that you're telling him to do. And so she she sets back my training quite a bit. You know, I'm home all day, so I have the patience to sit there for 30 minutes and teach him how to pretend that he got shot and roll over and play dead. That's funny. I like when he does that. (laughs) That's so funny. But, you know, like he'll halfway do it for her, and she'll give him a treat. And so then he'll try to halfway do it with me, and he's like, well, where's my treat? Like, no, I taught you a full, whole, you know, menagerie of actions and movements that you need to execute before you get the treat, buddy. Do it right or no treat. <laughs> he doesn't even know we're talking about him. He's laying here on the floor, relaxing. JJ, the older dog. Puppy's in the kennel. JJ's a good dog. JJ's ours good. Yeah. Doesn't run off, just good dog. Yeah, like even if he goes out to the pond, he comes back. He'll go down there, cool off, come back, lay down, watch me like when I'm in the garden. If I'm not, you know, he'll, and now he understands not to go down my rows. I could probably teach him to stay, like, on the rows and not cross over. That's just a little bit more work. So I just have him stay out of the hole so that grassy area he'll lay down in. Yeah, I try that with Adelina. 
she's gotten better since the plants gotten bigger. Like, don't touch those. But she's so helpful. Like, like if I'm weeding, she'll bring over a little pot. We can put you know, little rocks or weeds in them, and she brings them. Like, she loves helping. Loves helping. She helped. What'd she do last night? Or the other night when we were doing the fence post, uh, and the cows got out. Well, the back door of the barn was open, and they got in there and made a big mess. Luckily, the covers were on the grain and stuff, so they didn't eat that. But uh, she went in and helped uh, Lydia clean that up while we were trying to put the fence post in. And um, she just loves helping. She just. We're and I there. stepped on your beets right after you told me I have beets right here. And like, oh, I, look at those. I hemmed and hawed over how much I was excited because you have probably about 30 or 40 seedlings, it looked like. Coming yeah, up. I think subconsciously you're mad because my beets are there and you're like, oh, I'm going to step on these. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> no, I, want, I, I need at least five or six of those. Just to... That's not a problem. Angie doesn't really care for them. I, I like them. Like, I like pickled beets. Uh, yeah, I, I eat them with sandwich. Like, Nikki eats olives with her sandwiches. I eat pickled beets. Yeah, I can't do olives. I, I can't. They're a little too out. salty for me. It. Every once in a while, like a couple times a year, whenever yeah, she can't. has, when she makes sandwiches and I see the olives on her plate, I'm like, can I have a couple of those? A couple. Like, I'm not a big. Yeah, I don't. Some people like the green ones. Some people like the black olives. Some people don't like any. Some people like them both. I can't. St- I've tried them. So, I think the black olives are a little milder than the green olives. Yeah, I just I can't do. Well, it. I got maybe I guess it depends on what kind of black olives. Yeah, because there's some that are just putrid. No, I don't mind like olive oil on stuff or it, it just the olives themselves. I just don't. Just not my thing. Sometimes I'll you know say I don't like something. I've never tried it. You know, but I've tried olives many times and just nope, can't do it. Just yeah. something I just don't like about it. I like pickled okra. That's pretty good. I've never had that. Pickled okra. It's really good. You can get a spicy, normal. Hmm. It doesn't really get hot enough here. I had a couple. I had four okra plants last year, and they didn't really produce. So it was either too much water or not really hot enough. But I think they like it really hot. Really hot. Nice. Um. So I didn't plant any okra this year. Just like I didn't plant any watermelon or cantaloupe. I know. Watermelon, cantaloupe, you have to start it really early. And even, like, uh, what's it called? Uh, man. Musterfield Farm in Sutton, New Hampshire. This beautiful farm that they still kind of run. I used to go there because they had an antique engine show there. And as a kid, we'd go to engine shows during the summer, which was a lot of fun. I enjoyed as a kid, and I still enjoy But Sutton was always my favorite because there's so much to do with there's just a huge farm they had like the food they had the produce a big beautiful garden they used to do uh the uh mock like revolutionary war uh stuff so you'd have people dressed in british stuff and america you know it, it was really cool and uh they always had a nice garden but even their watermelons were you know like yay big and it's a beautiful garden like someone probably spends their full time just working on the garden and uh so I've never had, like, even, so if they're that good, and I'm like, mm, can I actually grow a watermelon? It's hard. I grew three tennis ball-sized watermelons last I year. I think it's and why they. should have been, you know, kickball size at least. I think it's why Florida is known better for, you know, for like watermelons because it's, I mean, you start getting produce down, down there in February. Yeah, mm-hmm. I was talking to my uncle the other day, and his, he's about to plant, like, a whole new garden. Like, he's already harvested and then it got too hot and kind of killed everything off because it was up to, like, 108 degrees. So I think he said he had a couple watermelons, basically, that survived all that, and it's getting overrun by weeds. You know, they haven't had a lot of rain either, so he said he's about to plow it and start his fall garden, which will be, a, like, our garden out there. It'll be a full... So crazy. And there'll be a second run at it. It's pretty cool to have an opportunity to do that. Yeah, it's really hot though. Yeah, that's that heats a little. That sounds a little much. But he said he ran a uh, pipe all the way down, so about two hundred fifty feet of pipe to water it, so he can maintain it. But I don't have that luxury here. Well, he could. Yeah, it's a big hill. Doesn't you have to be what two feet deep? Is that the frost line here, or what is it? No, four to five. But really, four to five feet. Mm-hmm. Wow. But. With yours, you're just going to use it in the fall. So once it got cold, we always could shut it off, blow it out, so it blow the water 
the, the water all out over there so that way it was good um and then you could probably put it like a foot or two because that's what i'll probably do on my land eventually from the barn run at least the spigot hose all the way up to the garden and then i could do something from there but yeah you could blow it out and whatever but yeah you're like regular water line for your well and stuff it's gonna be four to five feet deep um and i've seen frost like in your driveway you'll get frost more because it's plowed off we've worked before and had four feet of frost and it, it's horrible it sucks <laughs> it's like you know if you people could have just replaced sewer pipe during normal weather this would be a one-day job and it turns into a week because you're jackhammering and yeah yeah that was still i went out there and learned some stuff from you what it was that in April? And it was still, the ground was still frozen? March or April, right? Up in Vermont? Yeah, yeah that was, yeah, I don't remember what that was. Well, I mean, it was pretty it was March, late. April. Yeah, it it might was, have been April. There wasn't that much snow left on the ground. And the grass was greener. As you started yeah, digging. Yeah, it was April. Yeah, we're hitting a little, a little bit of frost there. Um, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, so it all depends. You know, every year's different. Every, you never know. We've had years where there's literally no frost. And then we've had years where... It was a wet December, and then it froze hard, and it got cold, and it was like four or five feet of frost, and so you never know what you're going to get. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, so I think, does this matter in your house? It does to me. And I noticed this last night. I was like, you know, I'm going to talk about this on the show because it irritates me so bad. Toilet paper. I'm the person, like, toilet paper goes over, Okay. My like school. over towards you or over towards over the top so not so beards not mullets is what my uh sister-in-law says so beards comes down the front mullet at the back so andrew i swear it puts the toilet paper upside down just to irritate me because when it comes from the back i don't know just because i think i grew up that way right it just and it's it, it's face it's simple i'm the opposite of you but does anyone ever change it on you and you're like no, it goes the other way. Yeah, whenever I go to the restroom and if I try to grab toilet paper and it comes down. Yes. See, it's at a weird angle and it tears, so then I flip it, turn it, so that it comes down to the back and it tears cleaner. Do you find people in your house, like Nikki or Zeta, just put it on any which way? Yeah, they do. They don't really yeah. care. Because Andrew's thing is, I'm just glad I have it. And I agree, too, that I'm glad that I have it when you need it. But I swear she does it just because she knows it's like... It's just one of those little things. You know how everyone has, like, this little thing that bothers them? That's the one thing that bothers me. And I'll be like, so every time I'll be like, flip it over. <laughs> I swear she does Are you it saying this because you per- flipped mine over one day, or? <laughs> no, I don't think of, I don't think I've ever flipped yours over. Now that I think about it, I could, because then they'll get the blame for it, and I'll be like, <laughs> Sometimes she'll put it on. I know, like, she's like... But, yeah, as soon as I see it the way that you like it, I immediately just grab it and turn it around. Sometimes I think she, like, straight up just does it on purpose. So one day she did. Like, she, I know she did because she just left out of her. So I took the toilet paper and I hit it. <laughs> <laughs> now when you need it, you're going to have to find it. <laughs> and sometimes I think Nikki will not put it on the roll just to see how long I will not put it on the roll. Like, we've had things like that over the years. Like, I remember in St. Louis there were two leaves on the stairs going upstairs. And I didn't bring the leaves in. And I always am like, you know, pick up after yourself, whatever. I get told to pick up after myself. And so for, like, the longest time I kept walking past the leaves waiting for her or Zeta to pick up the leaves because I didn't track them in. I'd like you know what I mean? Like I I saw them on my way up the stairs. I remember the first time, and they were they were there for quite a while. And finally, after a few weeks, I picked them up. And Nikki was like, "I was wondering how long it's going to take you to do that." I'm like, "So I'm waiting for you or Zeta to pick them up, <laughs> timing you, and you're timing me. We're just a bunch of <sighs> that's jack funny. wagons, the two of us. But you know, I, such is married life. We're it'll be 20 years this year, next nice. month." What's that big celebration? Nah. Nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, just, I mean, we'll have, like, dinner or something. but uh, Well, I'd hope, yeah. Did you have your Mexican food last night? Yeah, it was kind of disappointing. They forgot part of the order, so, I mean, they, Nikki just called. It, uh, it's hard to get in, you know, because it's so busy. Crazy so busy. she had to sit there and call and wait for them to pick up, and then she didn't feel like, and I didn't feel like driving back out there because 
the rest of the food was there. It was a quesadilla, kind of like a, for us to have like a portion of and some leftovers today. And then, I don't know, maybe the enchiladas weren't hot enough. But I'm a big corn tortilla for enchiladas guy. Unless I make homemade enchiladas, then I'll do half and half because just the way I soak the enchiladas in the sauce. And then their sauce is not as good as my homemade sauce. Yeah, they, I see, their I enchilada sauce. But that, like they have great food. Don't get me wrong. Like, oh, I yeah, know it's good. We've been there many times, many times. And uh, but like I prefer our homemade enchilada sauce. Yeah, I get. So their guacamole is really good. Yeah, we had some guac last. And week. Andrew's guacamole is really good. And theirs are, is similar. Um, I've never been a huge guacamole person, but guacamole is one of those things like you're like, eh. But then when you try, you're like, oh yeah, that's right, I do like it. You know, because there's some just food out there. You're like, eh. But then you're like, oh yeah. That's right. I do like this, like applesauce. Like ah, I don't want to eat that. And like, oh, yeah, that's really good. Why don't I eat that more often? Like it's one of those things. But well, homemade applesauce is yeah. way better than anything oh, you buy at so the good. store. Yeah, um, yeah. I like the. I, we've had a lot of good food there. I'm trying to, th- you know, there's things I like better at like Grisano's up in Lebanon that, um, you know, versus there. Like I think the salsa is a little better up there. It's a little more spice to it. A little more. Well, I thought she was going to get, like, the seven-meat thing or whatever whatever it yeah. is because we've gotten that a few times. We just split it because it comes with so much. Right. You know, you just need a few extra tortillas to make your fajitas or whatever. Their rice and beans are really good there, too. And then Yeah, I was kind of disappointed. I didn't get beans either. So I like no. when I have enchiladas, I like to mix the sauce in with the rice and beans with the perfect amount of cheese on the beans. So I'm, I'm pretty particular, but... Mexican food is one of those tough things. It's really one of those things you kind of have to eat it there. Yeah, that too, like you know, I had to microwave my meal and it had like some sour cream on it. So then that was nobody likes warm sour cream. Well, I don't like warm sour right. cream. I mean, Chinese food you can take it home. It doesn't matter. It's you know, uh, there's a lot of food you can. But like for me, French fries, I just no. Yeah, you can't fresh or not. I just don't want them. Really? Yeah. So either fresh. Oh, or, I got you. Yeah, I, so I thought either, you were but, saying you didn't want them whether they were fresh no, or no, no. old. No, I love French fries. I love hand cut French fries. But with the air fryer, I can warm up French fries a little bit better. That's and true. Quicker. That's true. Because, you know, it only takes like four or five minutes to. I forgot we had an air fryer. Well, we did. To the market burnt, and we don't have an air fryer anymore. But, all right, position of the day for the school. Just, there's many positions available still. So go to the SAU's website. And there's a bunch of different positions on there. Yesterday was custodial. I know that custodian. I know they have para still available, and there's some teaching positions still available. So check it out. I think that's the last time I talk about it. We'll be on vacation next week, so um, and then we'll be in the second week of August. Crazy, crazy how fast it's going. Yeah, time's flying. Man, winter never seems to. That seems to drag. Which is good. I mean, if a time always flies, before you know it, it's, well, my grandfather says before you know what time's gone anyways. Like, it's crazy, but you got to slow down. <laughs> Farmer's Market is uh, today, 3 to 6. And obviously, it's every Friday, 3 to 6, until the end of the season. But uh, I guess today they're doing, um, probably the Library Arts Center is leaf drawing. Um, so let's just find us at the Farmer's Market and stop by and create with us a few minutes, uh, create with us for a few minutes between shopping um, each week we feature a different uh, free simple uh, quick art project uh, doesn't it uh, not yeah designed to be enjoyed by children and adults so I guess this week they're doing leaves so they must be doing they must be doing this right there. how I haven't we known about this we could have talked about it something else the library Arts center is doing do you see downtown I th- I'm not arms sure what's exactly what I'm but you see the new trees on the common it's been there for a while and they put like three different little pads out there like smith says the table here um i'm thinking maybe they're gonna put benches on them put them on uh which will look pretty it'll, it'll look pretty nice yeah i saw that the other day and i don't i don't officially know what i haven't but for the size of it seen it's that too small paid attention enough to notice it yeah if you go down today you'll you know now that i said something you know look and you'll see there's three of them and uh because they were you know roped off whatever someone walked in it but they're concrete and it's about the size of this table so i don't it's too small for a picking table so i'm thinking it's going to be benches which will look really nice um the commons have been looking really nice they've got some picking tables out there and some benches and i've seen a lot of people taking advantage looking forward to them paving repaving the road out there the main drag 
that still flooded again yesterday. They fixed some of it, like, oh, but that's state. I have to go check out Shaw today and see if any of that substrate's left in those holes. It's funny, we were talking about that at shooting club, and Brent's dad like, yeah, they put some dirt in there, and we told him our idea about planting a tree and all that, and, uh, yeah, he even said that it's just terrible, like, the parking lot's crap. Why don't you fix it? So I, I have no idea. Like, I don't know. I'm just hoping the state's going to pave, like, Sunapee Street this year, like they were supposed to last year, and then like I heard all of downtown was supposed to be paved, but I still haven't done anything with the stuff up with the common apparently because that floods every single hard rain like that. So I don't know if the piping is too old in that section, or and that's all state. That's not anything with the town. So um, yeah, yeah, someone shared a picture of a bunch of water flooded through there, but it rained hard, like really hard. No, it was good rain. I can't wait to. On the way home, See I was the like, fruits of it, literally. <laughs> exactly. Um, this Sunday's band concerts, Party Crasher 6 to 8 on the Common. And then tomorrow is uh, Sandy's annual ride for Huntington's. So Sandy is Alan's sister, our friend Alan, and now she has Huntington's. And this is the third or fourth year he's done a uh, motorcycle ride for a, a benefit for her. So it's tomorrow. It starts at Old Man's Junk in Goshen, which is right across from the Goshen store. It used to be the Lumber Barn. Um, registration's 8 o'clock. Stands up at 10. It's $25 a bike with or without a rider. And all these benefits go right to Sandy for her, her fight with Mount Huntington's. And there'll be food prizes at DJ. And uh, if you don't have a bike and you want to stop and donate, you're, you're welcome to do that as well. Um, you know, they're going to be there from 8 a.m. to probably... Three or four o'clock in the afternoon, I'd imagine. Um, time we get back, usually it's around noonish or a little after. So. What's old man's junk? So old man's junk is he, but like old like. No, it's like a flea market. Oh, okay. He calls it old man's junk, but basically it's a. I don't know, like a flea market or secondhand store. Or he's got appliances and. But like for more geared towards. Um. Yeah. Like this. It's no like tools or, and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, tools, or appliances. Housewares or something? Yeah, like that. all that stuff. So like a big yard sale, but there's no clothes. There's any clothing, but like any of the other little things. He's got like an LCAD. He's got all these things. Well, he has a stupid price on the LCAD. I'm like, dude, you're never going to get that in a million years. He's like, you never know. Some outer state might come in, and, which I was like, it's actually true. Because so I went to another place. I'm like, no, that's a fair price. I for one his is like stupidly priced because i think he doesn't care if he sells it or not he probably like looking at it anyways and i said yeah, i don't know our state might come through and i'm like that's actually true sometimes you get the right person and they want it and they're like oh, i'll pay the crazy amount of money for it but, <laughs> but anyways yeah so that's happening tomorrow um kids are down actually right now helping set up for it they've got tents up and uh chairs and all that so it's for a great cause uh yeah, Sandy's a sweet lady. Andrews take care of her um, for a while, and um, Huntington's a, a nasty, uh, nasty thing, unfortunately. And but this just benefits her um, for things she wants to do, or you know, because well, she's you know, you, you never know how many years left she has on on this, unfortunately. And so they're trying to get it so she can enjoy life as much as she can, as long as she can. So if you're available tomorrow, and even if you don't have a bike, if you just want to stop and donate. They would, uh, you know, appreciate it. So, congratulations, Cronus Market. They got fifth place for uh, best subs in New Hampshire. What was that through the newspaper? Or? I think it was through WMUR because someone sh said congrats on what's up Newport earlier about it, and then I saw something about WMUR. So, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's local, and they've been making. I asked Brian, Brian one day, I'm like, how many subs do you think you made? And he's like, I couldn't even tell you, but over a million like he was doing it forever his dad and mom started the store i believe i think it was his dad and mom i don't think it was his grandparents i think it was dad and mom and uh and he's been doing it forever so yeah i i if i'm getting a quick sub i go to coronas yeah yeah if you just want a quick simple sub and uh it's still it's light refreshing filling yeah it's still i, I like the expensive. cucumbers that he puts on there yeah and it's the same sub pretty much. I mean, he had to change his bread at one point, um, which was a toll with nothing to do with him. It was just a, an issue with getting stuff during COVID and whatever. Um, I did like the other bread better, and then just that's just my opinion. But 
pretty much makes it the same way he's made it forever. So it's kind of nice though because you don't. Most things change every couple of years, or whatever. This is pretty consistent, you know. Yeah, it's good. Might not have quite as much meat or something on as used to because he tries to keep the cost to still be affordable for everybody, you know. And but uh, it's good. You can get and you can get them. I usually just pick them out of the cooler. They always have salami or ham ready to go, but. They also have turkey roast beef. They can make one for you too. So, um, so congrats to you guys for. Uh, I always get my fresh made. I guess I'm a jerk instead of getting See, it out of there. I mean, if there's like a line or something, I'm weird because when I sit in a I cooler, I guess I would do that. But but like when I sit in a cooler for a while, then it's just 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 me. I like the fact that it doesn't get not soggy, but it gets a lot of moisture in it. And my mom's weird. Like soggy bread is like her thing. She'll like gag. Like she can't stand soggy bread. I don't like like soggy soaking bread but the moisture from the refrigerator i like it so that's why usually i'll get one from the cooler for that purpose where if it's fresh made it's you know it's a little drier based on it's yeah, fresh it's you know fresh, yeah. that's just me and my my craziness yeah, but yeah. uh we all have weirdness in us we do tonight the uh nascar whale and modified tour is going to be at claremont speedway for a 150 lap race um which is pretty cool they haven't been there and i think it's said like 15 years um, it's 40 bucks to get in. It's a little pricey to get in. However, this is similar to going. These are the same cars you'd see at Loudon. Um, you know, the, the the fast cars, the the big modifieds that um, are on the NASCAR tour. So, um, you know, if that's something you want to go out and do, they always have food and a beer garden and all that good stuff. And I imagine some of the people from the tour would be going around, probably doing the autographs and different things too. So, um, check that out. I think it was 6.45 was qualifying, 7.10, 7.15 for a feature or something like that. So, um, yeah. And the last thing I have for local stuff slash New Hampshire is gun stock. And that's where well, you're up on that one. Yeah, I've, been, I've read a couple different uh, takes on it. So gun stock is in Belknap County. It's a ski area. Yep. And they're undergoing an audit right now. And so one side of the story is that a couple of commissioners are free staters, they're out of control, they're trying to, you know, end the fun, um, out of con- And so the management team at the ski resort, they all resigned uh, either this Wednesday or last Wednesday. Last week. Yeah, last week. So it was last Wednesday they all resigned. Well, the other side of the story, of the two competing stories, is that the general manager used to work for Governor Sununu at his family's resort. And then in the audit, they found that he donated $150,000, the resort did, to Friends of Sununu for his reelection campaign. And the issue with that, if it's true, is that that's public funds going to support a political candidate. Which is um, illegal. I don't know if it's illegal, but it's definitely... It's illegal. Um, well, the article I read didn't go as far as saying it was illegal, but it said it's definitely uh, some ethical concerns at the least, right? So you have... It's worth following just to find out because it does involve our our governor and one of our ski resorts in Belknap County, Um So you have one side saying the commissioners are out of control and the other side saying the management was out of control. And um, all of this allegedly will come out in the audit. So it's worth following, paying attention to, and see what's going on because there are two competing stories. Is it the commissioners are out of control or is it the general manager and his management team that's out of control? And the audit is supposed to show this. And so it's kind of crazy when you look at both sides because you have two really op- opposing viewpoints of what's going on at Gunstock. So it's worth looking into, following it, and finding out what you think or what, what comes out of the audit because the concern is, is this the people's money and do you donate the people's money to a candidate, oh, by the way, the manager used to work at his resort, so there's a personal relationship there. So is there uh, any quid pro quo um, based on that? Because now 
that same gentleman who resigned last Wednesday, the manager who signed off on this large donation to Governor Sununu's reelection campaign, has been offered a job at the Parks and Rec Department by Governor Sununu. So that's where allegations of quid pro quo come in on that side. So you have the governor being accused with this general manager of quid pro quo, and then you also have the commissioners being accused of not supporting it, and free staters, uh, they're known to not want to give tax money to anything, and much less tax people. So two different opposing views going on in gun stock. Yeah, I looked it up real quick. I, I still don't, and I couldn't find an answer real quick, but that'd be similar to, say, Hunter, so the town manager, says, all right, we've got extra money. I'm going to take $5,000 and donate it to uh, Ruth Ward. Ruth Ward. I'm pretty sure it's illegal because, and the reason I say that is because so in Belmont County, which is a big county, obviously you have many opposing views. You have Republicans, Democrats, Independents. You have all these people. So for them to give money, which is public money, to any individual campaign, so 150000 I just can't see how it's legal. Right. So if that's true on the surface, it's definitely immoral and unethical. Right. Now, the legality part, that's for lawyers to figure out. I, but right. just on the surface, like you said, if you equate it to you know, our town manager donating to right. a political party, then you have, people would have issue with that. Yeah. So that's what the one side of the issue is, and the other side is trying to paint the commissioners as being out of control. Yeah, because when I've... Uh, and exerting too much and wanting loyalty. There's always, like, a loyalty test. Yeah, because there was this thing that... So the, when I heard the story, because I had no not, like, clue about it, I've seen it, but I don't really... You know, I'm paying attention. And uh, so Sadie's parents, who live in that area, are saying, well, no, it sounded like Sununu sent, like, a stern letter to them, to, to the commission or whatever, and it seemed like, you know, Sununu was a good guy, like, hey, you guys can't be doing this, whatever. And then when you come out with that story, I'm like, huh, there's this story, and then there's that story, and I'm wondering if this story was created to make that story disappear because if it was being audited and they gave that money, I'm telling you, it's not going to be, something's going to happen there. Well, yeah, it's because if they did donate that and it's the county's yeah. money, all of those opposed to Sununu can be like, I want my money back. Like, it, I didn't authorize that. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's 150000 They could have put it in Belknap County's education or something or right. roads or, well, I don't know, whatever. Like, yeah, but, or improving the ski resort. And, right. 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 <laughs> yeah, because Gunstock's... Some type of investment. You know, Gunstock's owned by the county, right? That's, that's there, right? It's like Mount Sunapee is owned by the state. It's run by Vail Resorts. It's a lease, which you ask a lot of people, they say that never should have happened because I guess this new company just... It's just a big ski company. They don't care. It's not like it used to be. For years when I was growing up, and I don't remember the famous name that ran the ski area there for great things, but then Vail bought it, and we've just heard that it's been Yeah, you very log on and you just click run. it from a you know, drop-down menu, so they have Colorado resorts and everything yes, else. Yes, everywhere. And then basically, like my son said, he, he skis. He's like, yeah, you go there, and you wait for two hours to get up the mountain. It takes 20 minutes to get down or less, whatever. And he's like, they'll sell and sell and sell. They just keep selling. They don't care. So they'll sell. Even if, say, it was 1,000 people could sufficiently ski, you know, they'll sell 2,000. They don't care. It's just more money, more money, I guess, from what he said as far as the lift thing goes. And then just the last year I heard so many horror stories on one of the Facebook pages about, like, traffic being out in the traffic circle. It's going to cause an accident. Like, which in the past has never happened. Never been that way. So there's got to be something to it. Something changed yeah. with these people that... Well, plus you had a lot of people fleeing Massachusetts to come up here and That's stay true. in rental homes, and so... It, yeah, so I'm sure that contributed too, but... So it'd be interesting to see what happens with it all. Because, you know, there's more freedom up here in New Hampshire than down there. True. Allegedly. Allegedly. So anyway, so that's the that's the story. So competing stories will be close. It'll be interesting to see what comes out of the, the audit... And then from there, probably more of the story will flush out. Yeah, because you can't. But I kept seeing, like, references to gun stock and, and at least two commissioners, so they're probably the ones that are the, the two free staters. Um, and then this morning I read a letter from a state representative that laid out the political donation to 
friends of Sununu in 2020. And I think it was either 150 or 250,000. So it was a large. Yeah, when you sold it to me, I thought you said 200. Yeah, like, it's, a it's big amount. Like yeah, it's in the not a couple hundred bucks. We're talking. Yeah, we're talking a lot, hundred thousand or more. Yeah, uh, yeah, because the way I, I heard it and, was, and, and, and until the audit comes out and shows it, that's you know, it, it could have been 150 dollars or you know, who knows? But still, it comes down to the perceptions. Perceptions matter. Yeah, because like I said, when I first heard the story, it was to me it sounded like. You know, kind of like two corrupt free staters on there that were trying to line their pockets. But then the flip side of the story is like, is that it? Or was it they uncovered the fact that Gunstock was giving campaign money to Sununu and someone that used to work for him? And like, yeah, and now has a job allegedly lined up at the Parks and Rec Department, according to this letter from the state representative. And I, that's a, uh, my computer died, so I don't have the... That's some mega corruption, if that's all true. Yeah, so it's worth following. So keep an eye out for that. Look it up and read the competing articles, and we should know more once the audit is finalized. But, you know, it could have implications on yeah, the governor and that ski resort area. Well, they lost their whole management team. They all resigned last week. Yeah, so it's, yeah. All right, let's do the meme of the day. All right, this one here, Booker T. Washington. A lie doesn't become truth, wrong doesn't become right, and evil doesn't become good, just by it's accepted, just because it's accepted by the majority. Man, isn't that the truest thing ever to go to today? And this was said, I'm sure, a long time ago. So they try to push lies on everything and make it as its truth, and then you know, wrong and evil, and it's like, oh, it's just, no, it's okay, it's acceptable. It's okay. It's supposed to be that way. You know, it's it's supposed to be uh, okay to... Uh, well, yeah, it just goes training. back to... It's supposed to be okay to do whatever. You can see the definitions. They redefine things to... Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Like... They just change the definition up and... I mean, you saw it live on the show. Well, not live, but while I was looking up, because I, I try to utilize mostly if you Google or Bing or DuckDuckGo something, right. the articles, you, you'll be able to find them. And so I got recession, the definition, from Wikipedia two or three weeks ago, and it changed. Like I said it, I was like, wait, this isn't what it said. This is why I screenshot lots of things. So that way down the road when someone says to me, Oh, no, that's not true. I can pull a screenshot and be like, that's funny because it was true here. Because I see it happening so much in our country where things just change. You know, taking statues down down south because they're offensive to people. Yet, when you're trying to erase the history that, you know, the KKK was a Democrat party. And that's just history. Yeah, they, yeah. So, you can try to change history all you want. But there's some of us like yeah, I mean, you're even, gonna even attention. bad history needs to be remembered properly. Yes. Yeah. Like, otherwise, you don't learn from it. Right. That's why my dad like has some old encyclopedias at his house, and I was like, "Don't throw those away. I want those." Like, why would I want encyclopedias? Because so ten years from now, when they try to change history so much, you can go back and be like, "Oh no, this is the real history," because they're trying to rewrite it to fit what they want. Yeah, that's and that's not okay. No. That's just some evil people. Yeah. Selfish. Yep. All right, I just want to read this thing that I want to show my Facebook friends. I don't I think I might have wrote it. I might have shared it. It looks like it was something he just wrote, though. But uh, America is in the middle of a mental health crisis, and it's beginning to affect us all. Think back 100 years. There's no way in hell our grandparents would have elected a man like Joe Biden as president. Children wouldn't be going to school and murdering their classmates. Your grandparents wouldn't step back and uh, have tolerated the corruption of elected officials in Congress on the scale that we have today. America has lost its moral backbone, and we have become weak through tolerance and an easy target to be overtaken. The once greatest nation in the world is about to be overthrown. And that's so true. We're, society is arguing over pronouns, and if men can have babies... And if they can sexualize your children and all this, well, countries like China and Russia or whatever, like, 
plotting. Hmm, how can we take over the United States? They're trying to. And China's got. They're, they're like, trying to improve their math, and get them learning tougher math at earlier ages. And we're arguing about. Yeah. You know, should people be talking about sexuality in school? And like, no, you should be talking about. It's so funny. Reading the, math. I mean, that's one instance. It's, it's like I said a couple of days ago. It doesn't matter what political party you are. It's a moral stance. If the people telling you to do something aren't doing it themselves, you have an obligation not to do it either. Like, that's just how it is. Like, you don't tell me what to do and not do it yourself because then, therefore, you're just putting a burden and a hardship on me right. that you think that you're too good for. Yeah. And so, therefore, don't ask somebody to do something that you won't do yourself. Yeah. That's not anything political or anything else that's just you know being a person of character yeah no you got someone like DeSantis that banned a bunch of books in Florida for school-aged children because they had critical race theory or uh, I think most of them are critical race theory but or sexual stuff that shouldn't you know be taught oh he's banning books and you know because that's <laughs> no he's not banning books like banning books you can't buy them he's banning books for five-year-olds not to have access to them so Playboy magazine wouldn't be appropriate for a five-year-old. So if I ban that, that means I'm censoring people and whatever. No, he's not allowing state money to be used to sexualize kids, to sexualize kids or to teach your white children they're racist because they're white or whatever, or they're a lesser of a person because of it. So that's not censorship like they're trying to say. They're trying to push it like, Oh, he's censoring people. No, he's not. He's trying to protect your kids from this garbage they're trying to push on them. So this isn't banning books like saying, okay, we're going to ban the book, whatever, 1984, 1984, because we don't want people to think that way. Now, if he did that, I'd have a serious issue with it. But that's not what's happening. No, he's making it age appropriate, just like exactly. the movie, what is it, MPAA, whatever, that assigns a PG, PG-13, right. G. Right, same exact same thing. thing. So if it's not if it's for a rated general movie. audiences, then maybe yes. it shouldn't be in an elementary school library. Yes, I agree with that. Right, so if he's got a PG-13 book, then that needs to be from 13 and up. If it's a rated R book, no, it has to have parental permission, just like the movie. Right. And if it's G, then any, it's, so we do it already anyways. Right. But it's well, just a rhetoric well, we want to push. Yeah, it's... it's this is nonsense. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, stand up for what you believe in. Yeah. And don't be afraid to say it. Right. And then that's the thing. I think so much. That's why you have freedom association because people can listen to what we say and be like, ah, I don't want to be associated with those guys. And you know, I think it's why so many people mm-hmm. think in this country now that what's happening is just the majority because mm-hmm. people. Like the normal people that don't agree with it, just stay out of there. Or right, because everybody anything. just wants to be left alone, and it's right. like that's ridiculous. I'm not going to let it affect me, but eventually it will affect you. Yes, when you're sitting with the vice president and she describes herself and what she's wearing and where she's sitting, like I, I find that very awkward. I'm so glad that I'm not. And wasn't it an Apple? Google? I don't know. But Remember, like, there was one before. Yeah, that, but I mean, yeah. that's like a that's a social justice, so that you're seen and heard, which. If you're sitting at the table and you're the vice president, well, you're the seen freaking and heard. United States, you're seen and heard. If you're sitting at a corporate table and you're asked to brief, you're seen and heard. Like I, I just now, you might not like the reception you get if you didn't do the work that was required and you don't produce what you're supposed to produce. That has nothing to do with what you're wearing, where you're sitting, what your pronouns are. It has to do with your work performance. Which goes back to judge, you know, judge me by my character, judge me by what I do, not where I'm sitting, what color I'm wearing, and what I want to be called. Yeah, I mean, you're the vice president of the United States. Because my perspective on it you're... is, meetings are useless as a it, like. My whole point when I was the the guy sitting there running meetings was. Do we need to have a meeting for this, or can you just send us out in an email? We can all read it, and then those of you that need to coordinate can get together and coordinate and then send me an up, a updated briefing because you realize that you need to fix something. Like To sit around and talk about stuff for hours on end is keeping people from actually doing their job. So I, you know what I mean? Like, so I have a whole thing against meetings anyway, and then just adding that 
flourish to it is is ridiculous from my point of view. Yeah. So there's a story. I mean, story has been out for a while. It was disinformation for a long time, and now it's coming out as it's not disinformation. So Joe Biden met with 14 of Hunter Biden's business associates while he was vice president, despite denying knowledge of his son's foreign dealings. And this is from emails, and this is from the White House logs, uh, that this actually all... Well, there's also pictures of him on the golf course. Yeah, so in April 2014, Hunter emailed David uh, Lehman, uh, who's Biden's photographer, to ask for photos of a meet and greet that they had had with uh, Miguel Alman Sr. and Jr. and Jeff Cooper. I know Miguel, those are two like billionaire businessmen from... Mexico or something like that, and uh, so I just want to like point out that you know all this conspiracy theory stuff, and this isn't true, and this is just uh, Russian disinformation or Trump lying or something, whatever you want to say. It's I mean, we literally have a president of the United States right now that is doing everything that they accused the last one of doing, but this one's actually doing it and has been doing it for a long time, and there's all the proof in the world. Yet, nothing to see here, folks. Let's think about January 6th, though. People try to take over the government. Yeah, I, absolute power corrupts, absolutely. Yeah, when you've been there for almost 50 years, that's, you probably feel pretty immune to anything. Yeah, well, all the connections you've made and everything else. and yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So the... But, I mean, I, I've... Yeah, I, I never bought into the whole Russian Russian disinformation thing because, like, the letter that was signed by 50 intelligence officials, that if you talk to anybody, like... Yeah, it was all a lie. But, but you know what I mean? Like, they're professional liars. Like, that's what they do. Right. And they lie the about intelligence that. is, mm -hmm. like, especially when you go to, like, CIA. Right. I mean, those guys are professional liars. Isn't... Uh, yeah. Somebody had said the first thing they teach you is to lie, cheat, and lie, cheat, and steal, which is the exact opposite of what like they teach you at West Point, which is I will not lie, cheat, or steal, nor tolerate those who do. It's like the you know you're brainwashed into which I, you know you're not really brainwashed, but you're that's the, like the mantra of everything. Right. It's because trust and honor goes a long way and inspires people more than getting caught in lies and cheating and stealing, then you're, it goes back to once I do something wrong as a leader and somebody sees it, then everybody else can do it. So when the leaders, quote unquote, the people making up the policies don't do something, then as moral men and women, we should be like, yeah, I'm not doing it either. I can't say that enough. Like it bothers me, the hypocrisy and the us sitting here pointing it out and saying it and people think it's political or anything else. No, it's just, you know, being a human with some standards and holding people to account because yeah. they're going to hold me and you to account. Yeah. Making an example of. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, well, we expect them to. Yeah. You know, you know what I mean? Like, that's why, like uh, when we were talking to chief Wilmot, it's like, you know, it works with me. I don't want to be arrested. Right. It's a deterrent. Right. It, de it deters me from doing that. Right. Maybe it doesn't for some, but right. it does for me. Yeah. Uh, so the World Health Organization. <laughs> I just want to put this to real quick. A little. So this is one of their chiefs. Okay. Men who have sex with men should limit sexual partners to curb monkeypox spread. So I just want to keep pushing this to so how so like at some point you know if you're ever accused of being homophobic or anything but then you follow these people that love the world health organization think they're the best thing ever do you want to tell me how that's not homophobic or uh it's like aids 2.0 yeah. but fauci said the other day that pregnant women and children could get monkey pox no there's so much information out there you have to discern and decide for yourself like, what what is correct? Because back in May, it totally seemed like it was a whole new... It's a contact-based thing. It's a... But it, it followed the whole AIDS thing with the rave in Belgium. Right. Yes. 
this whole rhetoric they're trying to push. And then, and then it kind of stopped during Pride Month. There wasn't much said about it because June's Pride Month. That's true. And then now it's picked back up. The World Health Organization right back on the gay men are spreading this, basically. Right. So then, yeah. Which is, And then you have San Francisco and New York just recently declared it a emergency, a public health emergency. <laughs> 14,000 people out of three, or I mean out of... 19,000 people out of... 8 billion, 8 9 billion, billion yeah. whatever the, our yeah. Earth's population is supposed to be. Yeah. But just so, like, what gets me with this is it's spread by contact. So if you have it, you can spread it to anybody. You don't have to be a gay man to spread it. Anybody can get it. Yet the World Health Organization still is pushing this. Right. So which one is it? Is it... So let me primarily. Just, uh, let's just throw this out real quick. If Donald Trump, when he was president of the United States, or even today, but say then, got on stage and said, "Men who have sex with men should limit their sexual partners because they're spreading monkeypox," what do you think would happen? I, I think it would he's come across homophobic, as homophobic. He's this, this, that, blah, blah. So what blah. you're doing is you're not doing what aboutism. So what you need to do is you need to compare it. So comparatively. Right, so they're saying that this, even though only six out of the 15 commissioners that advise Tedros, the leader of the WHO, which I would recommend everybody look up Tedros's background, see, see, because he has, he's not a doctor, but see where he came from, look up his past. So he went against the majority of his advisors that said, yeah, it's not a global thing, not yet. So nine out of them said no. He ignored those nine and went with the six. So he declared it a global health uh, emergency or whatever the proper term that he used. And with COVID-19, we were quarantined. We were told we couldn't go to church. Can't you know? Walmart, Amazon, liquor stores, big box stores were okay. You had to walk up and down aisles. They they put arrows on there to show us plebeians how to walk and distance ourselves from each other, which Deborah Burks is now on the record as saying that that was mostly made up by her and Fauci on the fly. Like 60. Her own words in her book. I've read the quotes, and now unless they were taken out of context, so, you know, read her whole book to find out the truth. But anyway, so the point I'm getting at is, is there's a, you can't say that, right? Well, you, you know, from your point of view, that comes across as being homophobic. But is it when the whole world was locked down, or you know, at least our country was, but the world, most of the world did it as well, the Western world. To the standards of the mainstream media and all that. But they should, that right? That is so homophobic. They, but no, but they should say, hey, all of these... Uh, raves are shut down just like they used to shut down all raves where they're doing illegal drugs and people are dying which you know that was a thing back in the early 2000s i don't know right it was still going on but um but yeah so it, it it can be that's considered homophobic if you say that i've seen that like that's what you're saying but there are people out there who are saying if you do this that's homophobic right but they did it and but it's okay they get a free pass because they're the almighty well it goes back to double standards and hypocrisy exactly and that's my whole point about it is 100 percent that is my point that they can say that and that's okay i thought they were changing it to something else not monkeypox because that was racist apparently which is another joke yeah i guess it must not be sticking must not be uh so anyway i mean i'm not a medical guy i just from a observing observer point of view and someone who is on the receiving end of all these uh, dictates that they provide you would think that if it is a global health pandemic or whatever term they're providing for a, a public emergency that they would take actions if it's primarily passed that way if that's what they're saying and that's true then they should take equal action to prevent the spread all right stop the spread Two weeks to stop the spread. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. But I, you know what I mean. I'm not trying to be a jerk or anything. I'm just saying that if it's 
if that's the new standard, if we're going to shut down societies and everything when someone declares it a global health scare, then we should do that for all global health scares. Get to the source of it and shut everything down for two weeks. Just let's stop the spread. I don't agree with that, by the way. I'm just saying from a moral standpoint. Yeah. Does that make sense, or am I just rambling? Both. <laughs> now it does. It just bothers me. Like, hypocrisy bothers me. Yes, I hate double standards. I hate it. They can say this, which is clearly homophobic, or whatever you want to say, because I don't, I don't agree with the word homophobic or transphobic. I'm not scared of any of those things. So even if you don't like gay people and they call you homophobic, doesn't mean you're scared of them. You know what I'm saying? So maybe find another word. I, I don't know. I don't know. You know, you're transphobic because you remember that, that moron <laughs> freaking professor telling Howley that he's transphobic because he's denying the existence of trans people. How does it? Tra- how is that transphobic? Well, he didn't deny it. He, was he didn't saying either. That- no. He denied that men can have babies because they can't. That's just science. For all for two well, years re- now, they're going to rewrite science. They're rewriting it. Two like and a half years now. They rewrite the. That's why it, you want the encyclopedias because they rewrite things. They change definitions. They change things. Every one of these things right here is exactly why, when we're all put in concentration camps by the Chinese that are going to attack, you know, take over our country. Now you'll know why it happened, because you're fighting over transsexual crap, who can use a bathroom, what pronoun you use. You're worried about that, yeah, we should while be your enemy is worried about how can I destroy these idiots. Yeah, we should be focused on getting everybody the best education, best it, training. Exactly. It's time to crush all this crap, this woke... Physical health is important. Yeah. Exercise, eating right, that's really, really important. Getting rid of the high corn, high, high fructose, fructose corn, fructose corn syrup, syrup should be our number one goal because, you know, you know All right. it's it's like Wally. I feel like we're all, you know, we're, we're destined to be blobs on a ship because we've just destroyed ourselves without using some common sense and eating a little healthy, exercising, cleaning up after ourselves, not throwing twisted tea and tires out off the side of the road dispose of things properly if you do that then like society tends to like take care of itself i still see a twisted tea drinker and i'm like (laughs) where are you going that can where's that gonna go uh indianapolis colts gm cites uh ak-15 automatic weapon to uh bash firearms well they don't make an ak-15 it's called an ak-47 uh, and, and it's an AR-15, and you can't buy automatic weapons without a special federal permit that takes about nine months to get. Um, so this is just a story about you are a football guy, stay in your lane, and shut your damn mouth because you're an idiot. I think he's also talking about other things too, but, like, how dumb can you be? It's just like AOC asking questions to gun manufacturers and then not letting them answer and then jumping to the next thing because she wants to paint a picture that, you know. Well, that's what all of them do. They all. Yeah. <laughs> Republicans do that, too. <laughs> it's like they do, my, but time, usually my whenever, time, But usually when a Republican asks a question, they just don't answer it. These guys are trying to answer the question. She just cut them off before she even gave them an opportunity to answer the question, which I've seen many hearings and people are going after you know, the person asking the question, like, would you let him answer it? Like, Rand Paul. You're not letting Fauci answer it. Because he's not answering it. He's skating around or whatever. But she can just try to paint a picture any way she wants. And, and I mean... Uh, hey, here's my whole expectation. If if they ask you a closed-ended question, they answer it with yes or no. If they ask you an open-ended question, answer it, and, and explain yourself. Yeah. One of them asked Ruger if they made bullets to go through bulletproof vests and he's like we don't even we don't make ammo we make firearms like this is how stupid these people are and that's stupid that's not that's not yeah they're that's just stupid their staffers should have 
prep them a little bit better because they have staffers. They should have prepped them their self. They're but the freaking Congress people. I'm with you there, but like, I'm saying in this case, not only did they not know what they were talking about, but then their staffers did yeah. not protect them. Just like that guy, another Democrat up there with his hand thing, and he's trying to say it's a bump stock, basically. It'll make your gun automatic. And then he's corrected by, I think it was Chip Roy and someone else, saying that's actually an accessory for handicapped people or whatever that have a hard time holding a weapon to secure, to stabilize it. And it's not even what, like, this. these are the people that make rules that know nothing about anything. Most of those Democrats probably never even fired a gun in their life and are scared to death of them. Nah, I don't. I don't believe that. I bet a lot of them. I bet you AOC's never been shooting guns. Hmm. I don't know. You never know. Unless it was a drive-by. I mean, I think what your point that you're trying to make is is that the people who are making the rules and our laws should know what they're talking about before they start talking about it. They should do their research. Just like when we talk about gun stock, you know, there's two competing stories out there. Recommend reading them both, and you know, until we get the audit. But it's all propaganda. You know, holding no... off on full judgment until you get the whole story. They're coming in there with an agenda. Exactly. But it's both parties that do it, though. Right. But you know, in this case, you're talking about with gun control, so that's primarily, uh, you know, the Democrats are right. Want to take weapons away from everybody, and there's some Republicans, and then you know, you could use the the whole Republicans. Trying to get to this, you know, would you just mention Hallie trying to get her to answer the question? Yeah, she won't do it. All right, because she's afraid of uh, offending people. And it's because uh, she's only there because because they've painted it. If you don't acknowledge that men can have babies, then you're some type of bigot. You're some type of ist when it's like, no, it's just four years ago. That was common knowledge. And 12 years ago, we'd have laughed and everybody would have laughed. But now they have taken over the space and so the silent majority sits there and you know rolls their eyes at the whole men can have babies because it they had a people magazine 10 or 15 years ago trying to make that claim and it was ridiculed even on the late night talk shows and everything else right. because it's it's misrepresenting the truth the truth is it's a woman who is transgender and still has all of her woman or his, whatever, body parts. And so while they have a buzz cut and, you know, maybe even a beard Doesn't because of the hormones. I mean. Right. So it's still, it's a, you know, it's a woman who's taken hormones, like, scientifically. Now, on a personal standpoint, some people have chosen, yes, you're now a man because you're, that's what you identify with. So not everybody in America agrees with that whole concept i want to be a cat i can be a cat i want to be a woman i'm a woman here's like, a, steve here's a perfect example like that's a you're, that's a that's not true in the sense of nature can prove differently I that's it. why I, they're trying to i got it right here steve okay my truck right outside right now my 81 chevy truck i'm gonna go i'm gonna put a painting job on that and i'm gonna call that a porsche 911 yeah it's a porsche 911 the VIN number is going to still come back as a Chevy truck, but I painted it, and I want to call it a Porsche. Now it's a Porsche. And you put all the Porsche accoutrements on it? Yeah. Yeah, now it's a Porsche. Yeah. I, I, you know, I'm not trying to be mean to anyone by saying this because I have sympathy because there's stuff going on. Just like if you can't accept the fact that, like, you know, we both need to lose some weight— I don't, I'm not offended by the fact that, like, if my doctor says, hey, your height and weight says that your BMI is too high, you're technically obese, I'm not going to get mad at my doctor and think that he's insulting fault. me. I'm going to be like, well, what do I do? What's the best way to do it? Because I don't want to take a pill. He's going to say, well, you need to eat right and exercise. If you have a good one. Yeah. But you know what I mean? Like, it's not offensive. Like, it's a known fact. Well, today it would be offensive oh, because this being overweight causes heart problems. Yeah. And uh, other things as well. Yeah. Pulmonary, it can cause you know, lung issues, all kinds of things. And so it's not an insult to you. Like, sorry that you put all this weight on. You've been eating food that's probably cheaply and readily available to you. And maybe you weren't taught in health class 
that you need to eat a balanced diet? Everybody's taught in health class. Well, the food pyramid, you know, they have issues with that. I think at the end of the day, you should just, you know, eat healthy and try to exercise. Don't just sit around and watch TV all day and night. Get out and walk around. Work your way up to jogging. All right, so this next story. Don't. We have more stories? I have two more things. So if you're trying to get out and around and exercise, don't do what these people did. This is from Brazil. And uh, in a rare case of a creepy clown being caught by the cops, authorities in Brazil arrested a group of young men who had uh, been behind a series of unsettling Harley Quinn sightings that has left the community on edge. So apparently a bunch of these young men were going out at night and whatever and dressed as clowns. and That was them. a big thing a few years ago. They would, like, take picture. You could... That's because it was big then. Yeah, but they didn't. No, I want to say this was before it. Maybe not. No, but but they... Sure. But they were, yeah, because it's creepy and it creeps people out. Yes. Like you want to see you want to see me act a fool and lose all decorum? Come up at me with a costume clown or a. <laughs> I think it's funny. It's not funny. Like you have no the. No, I think it's funny that you're scared of it. Like I'm that. not scared of it. I just it's there's something off putting with. You know, the Kansas City Royals mascot coming up and trying to dance in my face. Like, I can't see your eyes. Yeah, I, know that, I don't man. know who you are. Get away from me. I didn't make eye contact with you. Why are you still trying to dance and get my attention? You don't want my attention. Like, I'm I'm ignoring you up for a reason. Because this really happened to me at the Kansas City Royals game this is what it's 15 all about. years ago. No, just, and the clowns are just creepy. Clowns are creepy. John Wayne Gacy was a big serial killer and... Illinois, I believe it was. Uh, might have been Ohio, but uh, he was a clown on the side, which supposedly is some of what Stephen Keaton based his book It off of was John Wayne Gacy. But, uh, yeah, it's funny because clowns are supposed to be like this funny thing, whatever. I am no more people that are freaked out by clowns than actually think it's funny and cute, and it's, it's interesting. I, I don't. Yeah, I'm anti-clown. Yeah, I mean, clowns would bother me more than, like, if the Red Sox mascot come up here or something and came in, I would be like, oh, cool. But if it was a clown, yeah, I'd be a little freaked out by that. I mean, if I'm at a haunted ride or something, then okay, that's normal. But I could see how this could freak some people out. Yeah. I'm not a mascot, a clown. No, like, if a high school mascot, like mine was, like, the Huffman Falcons, if they had their head, the Falcon head on, it didn't bother me. But, like... I just had an issue that day at the at the Royals because the guy would not, or gal, whoever was in the suit, wouldn't, like, leave me alone when I was trying to walk through, you know, like, dancing in my face. And I, I thought you were cute. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, I, I need to not give me your attention. Read the read the vibes that you're getting. If You know what I mean? Like, if I'm talking to someone and I can tell that they're disinterested, kind of like how I was rambling on because it... Just the hypocrisy bothers me um, on all sides of, you know what I mean? Well, this next little last thing is not only hypocrisy, but to me is a karma story. So uh, D.C. DC mayor asked for help as immigrant bus to nation's capital, which is funny. So someone shared it that the D.C. National Guards activated indefinitely to help migrant buses arriving in D.C., calling it a humanitarian crisis that has reached a tipping point with 4,000 immigrants so far, or migrants, excuse me, so far, uh, requiring D.C. Armory be used to pro- as a process center. Requesting. So requesting request. D.C. Yes, yeah, so, so they're requesting that. So they're not actually activated or anything, but the mayor has requested the Guard. So she's asked the National Guard to be activated to set up processing center. Texas Republicans, and this is just part of the story, the Texas Republicans have been u- using the busing as a political statement in opposition of Biden's handling of the southern border. In a statement, State Attorney General Ken Paxson said D.C. Um, is learning what it's like to be a sanctuary city and uh, said it's no surprise that the mayor doesn't like it. Well, D.C. doesn't give a crap about any of the people coming across the border. Now, Abbott sent them to D.C., and now D.C. is all like, oh, my. And that's 4,000, not 3 million. And it's over 3 million now. We said 3 million, what, two months ago? So they're getting a little taste of their own, you know, policies. And that's why we're fortunate, I guess, in a way up here. Like, 
we're so far from the border until this, you know, the government no, starts busting them here. You, they are, because Maine, they're, I read a story a week or so ago that all the hotels are being rented out in certain towns for illegal aliens. Yeah. So... So they're shipping, somebody's shipping them all the way up here and putting yeah. them up in hotels in like, at least a few towns in Maine. It's probably happening in New Hampshire, too. Oh, I'm sure. Probably pays and who knows. I'll take some. Yeah. Well, you know, Paxton is elected. He's uh, so Sununu, I think, appoints ours. So our AG is somewhat oh, loyal yeah. to the governor, whereas in Texas... The AG has no, you know, quote unquote loyalty to the governor, but his loyalty lies with the people. So he acts on behalf of the people, not really tied into the governor. I think I like that better. So then you're not getting an AG that's like, yeah, I'll put an AG in here that'll let me do what I want. You get an AG that's elected. So yeah, it's kind of like the sheriffs. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Um, and there's only a few states that don't elect them. I think it's 33 elect them, and then the other states and territories are. Either appointed by the governor or like the legislature. Or, you know what I mean? So there's a yeah. few that are appointed, but most in our country are elected. In this case with Paxton, he's elected. So Because sometimes the governor of Texas, Abbott, is kind of weak or soft on certain things. And then this guy the, the AG takes action without necessarily – I'm sure he coordinates with him, obviously. But right. doesn't really – He's not beholden to him with any type of sense of loyalty other than I think they're both Republicans. Yeah. Yeah, that pretty much wraps up my stories for the day. I would pause it mean. A moment of patience in a moment of anger saves you a hundred moments of regret. That's a true story. I've had a lot of moments of anger where I'm like, hmm, I wish I could take that back that I said. I wish I could not do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's Oops. hard too. It's, uh, oh, it's so hard. Whenever you, because when you get your emotions, and it, and usually you're more emotional when communication lines break down, and then that's usually when everything bad happens. Is when someone feels like they're not being heard or listened to, and then that's when all kinds of bad things happen, either arguments or worse. Too bad that meme. Businesses and the problem with executives and everything all the way down to the lowest level is lack of communication so if that police officer had had that meme read that a couple weeks ago he probably wouldn't be in the trouble he's in now in florida possibly possibly all right steve well thank you for tending to my garden next week yeah i'll tend to yours when you're gone Fence hopefully will be good so you don't get a call that you need to help Uncle Fred with the cows or anything. That's what I'll, I'll finish doing next week since we're not going to be doing the show. I'll finish my inside of my fence, the wired portion to keep the gophers and smaller animals out. It'll get me to the end of next week. So Monday, not this following, this coming Monday, the following Monday when we come back, we'll have a picture of it. We can show other people that it's all done. Yeah. Well, fair enough. Put some pressure on you. All right. All right. Cause I need to because I don't want anything going in there and eating all because the tomatoes you saw, I got. Yeah, you have a nice garden. You don't want something coming in and eat them, yeah. which one of them little rodents could easily do that in yeah. probably a half a day or whatever. That's bad enough with the little white flies and cabbage worms or whatever they're called. I got, I got rid of them as of yet, or so far. Hopefully they stay away. Bastards are eating my food. I'm relying on making sure that my plants are healthy, so the plants can. I don't know. I, I got some. Uh, I got some organic stuff. I'm gonna go out there and juice them up with. I wanted them to. Hopefully, someone will bolt the ones that I want to bolt. I picked up some. Unless bolts a negative connotation in anything, but you know what I mean. Like I'm. I'm hoping that that rain yesterday and a good amount of sunshine today. All I gotta do is go, I'm gonna go out there and pull weeds today. The way those squash are growing we're gonna have to build a bridge over the <laughs> to get up here those things are hammering oh, mine have good. came out not yours yours have popped yours look beautiful they're huge and most of them are dark green there's yeah. some on the back row that are still got a little yellowish to them the ones i bought you know from the store but yeah all the ones from seed look great yeah oh, it looks I'm good. excited i hope they produce hope it's not all male flowers <laughs> And then it will just be a beautiful, lush, green, viney. 
Let's hope your area. flowers can have fruit if they're all males. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, thank you to Twin State Paving for sponsoring our show. Um, we won't have a show next week. I'll, I will be on vacation, but we'll be back uh, the second week of August. I'm hoping to make an intro and, and do a few things too on vacation and rest and revamp and come back better than ever. So Sounds good. All right, guys. If we don't uh, see you around town, we'll see you on our next show. Uh, what was that the 11th? I don't know. No, this Monday. Or 11th. The next Monday. Have a good one.